Welcome to an all-new episode of Get Lit with Leanna, the podcast. Join me as I sit down with a new guest author in each episode to discuss their books, careers, and everything in between. Today, I'm joined by one of my favorite, favorite, favorite romance authors, Alyssa Sussman, to talk about her new book, Once More With Feeling. You may remember I chatted with Alyssa last year about her book, Funny You Should Ask, which ended up being one of my favorite books of the year, so I could not wait to chat with her about her new release. This book is made for a theater fan. If you're someone that loves live theater, musical theater, Broadway, you will totally be immersed in the story and enjoy all of the little nuances that are totally made for a theater nerd. But also if you're someone like me that loves a second chance romance and enemies to lovers, a dual timeline, this even has a triple timeline. There's so much in this story to absolutely adore. I had the best time chatting with Alyssa about this book and also what she's working on next. If you're a fan of funny, you should ask, listen through to the end of this podcast. You will be shook. You will be shook. So without further ado, my conversation with author Alyssa Sussman starts right now. Welcome back, Alyssa Sussman, to the podcast. I'm dying, quelling, can't even function that you're here. Everyone that like knows me knows how obsessed I am with you and now both of your books. So what a treat to have you back today. First of all, how are you? How's everything? I'm good. I'm, you know, nervous, excited, uh, feeling good, feeling, feeling, you know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't be nervous so, I know I try you know it's you can't help it though anytime a book a new book comes out you're always going to feel a little nervous but I am yeah. I'm really very proud of this one very excited for people to read it and yeah I'm so excited for everyone to get their paws on this book obviously the last time we spoke was like a year ago and yeah. it was right before funny you should ask came out and I was like justifiably gushing over that book because as you know and as everyone knows I literally felt like you just like went into my brain and wrote me a romance book based on my interests in my life and then you went ahead and you like topped it by writing like a Broadway set celebrity romance second chance enemies to lovers like I don't understand how you managed to like top what you had previously done because your first book was so like immaculate like it was perfect completely flawless the most my favorite one of my favorite books by far of the year but here we are now with your second book like catch me up on what you've been doing in this last year since we last connected oh well this I mean the last year has been nuts um it's been a very challenging time personally um it's been great professionally but um when funny was coming out uh, I was dealing with a lot of lost a lot of family members a lot of a lot of death in our lives um so it was a weird kind of juxtaposition of like all this amazing career stuff happening and then you know being just dealing with a lot of grief and a lot of Mm. um just stuff but um it's been nice to sort of we're reaching we sort of passed a bunch of anniversaries which sort of there is this weird sense of of closure that comes once you hit a a year anniversary um at least for me Mm -hmm. and so it's sort of been nice to be like okay now I can you know I can enjoy the release of once more Mm -hmm. a little more than I could with funny because funny was just like it was so chaotic and and so many things were happening but um and it and it feels like such the fact that I you know once more is that I I am so proud of it because I there was a long time where I was just like this book is not working at all this is just crazy this is going to be something I am just going to have to promote and and be like yes I wrote it (laughs) and that's (laughs) There are words on that page. Right. So, but um to be able to to get to a point where I'm like, no, I'm I'm incredibly proud of it. And and it's very, it is as special to me as funny was and mm-hmm. is very personal. And mm-hmm. yeah, and you know, yeah. getting tried about theater is the best. The best. I can't wait to chat about this book like in depth with you because I'm just like you can see I'm like literally like a giddy piggy. Like I'm so excited. I love it. I love I it. I loved this book so so much. But when funny came out, you and I chatted like pretty early. Like we, I think we recorded at like the end of February, the beginning of March and the book didn't come out till like April, May. Right. Yeah. To April. So, like, yeah. It was like really early on. And like, it was before a lot of people had read it and we had like seen this mass like reception of this book. It was like obsessed over on obviously on Instagram, on TikTok, like it was literally everywhere. What was that like? I mean, obviously you had mentioned you, you'd been going a lot through a lot in your personal life, but to then see all of this like 
love and like adoration coming your way and like a deep obsession with this book. Like, was that a crazy experience, especially being your first like adult romance? Yeah. I mean, we weren't expecting it at all. It came out, you know, I think I have the best, best team at Dell um, and they are so wonderful. And, and I think even they were, you know, shocked by really? it going viral. And, and like, I think we were, you know, the first few weeks were fine. You know, they were, they were good. They were steady. And then all of a sudden it was like, boom. Mm-hmm. And, and that's because of the amazing book talk community and like all of you guys, all the readers like have just been so supportive and so kind and so generous. And, you know, that's been, it's, it's a, it's a weird situation. Um, but I think because, you know, it was my first adult book, but it was my fourth book that had been published. I really, I, I really had such a deep appreciation for what was happening and an understanding that like, this is not the norm. It's not the norm and you Mm -hmm. cannot expect it. You can't plan for it. Um, it's luck, it's timing, it's all those things. So I, I'm very, very grateful for the reception it got. And Mm -hmm. it made me so happy that people were connecting with it because it really was a book that I wrote so much for me. Mm -hmm. And, and the more I, you know, I'm writing and, and writing romance in particular, I'm like, I almost see, see this as an opportunity to be like, okay, how do I find my people? You know, like, how, like, I'm just going to mm-hmm. write about the things that I love and, and then the people, other people who love it are going to find me. And that 100%. is, like, that's like, so like, I, I learned that like most of my team at Dell are musical theater nerds because of this book. Oh and my I God. was like, this is the best. This <laughs> is like best. so great. I so, love that. Yeah. So like discovering, you know, all the other crossover of romance and musical theater people is like, I'm, I'm so excited for that. I'm so excited to, to make new friends. Uh, Oh my God. Same. I can't like, everyone knows that I'm musical theater obsessed. I'm always in New York. I'm seeing a million Broadway shows. Like it's, I I do not hide it and I do not like try to hide it, you know, but having like our books set in this world and having it be like, so like, theater heavy like obviously it's a romance book but like it's still so much in the theater world and like workshopping and rehearsals and opening night and like for someone also that's like lived it firsthand because my fiance works in theater and he's a producer like right. I- I'm just like this is you're speaking my language like this is just my favorite it's it's the weirdest and most amazing combination ever but when you wrote funny and then funny came out like when were you focusing time on this book like how were you managing managing to do the both at the same time I mean, I kind of didn't like I once more is such a weird um, writing process, like so different because funny was very fluid. Um, It just sort of came because there were no pressures. There were no expectations. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I'm just writing this for me. And then, then all of a sudden we have expectations for book two. And, and I had written a totally different version of a different book, different plot, totally different story. Um, that I scrapped. It was like, I was like, I don't know. It was really long. It was like a hundred thousand words, totally scrapped. Mm -hmm. I did maybe two other versions of this story that I rewrote pretty much from the ground up that were just like really different versions. Like I did one with um, where all of the, so the story is told in, in multiple timelines and I I wrote a version where all of the past timelines when they're like young adults was from Cal's perspective. Oh. And it didn't really work. Okay. And and my my lovely agent, my lovely editor, they were so kind and so because I was just going through. I was like going yeah. through it at that time. It was yeah. really hard to be creative and they gave me time, they gave me, you know, we pushed we pushed deadlines and things and they, they would just be like well, let's, uh, let's try a different, a different version of this, right. you know? And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, okay. And then when at some point, I think it was in August or something, um, I think I really leaned into the, to, to the, lo- like what I loved about the story. And that's when it really clicked where I was like, right. I'm just going to, I'm going to lean into all the theater stuff, all the mm-hmm. stuff I love about um, the backstage and behind the scenes stuff. Um, I'm going to make it, you know, a little sillier, a little more fun. I'm going to lean into sort of romance tropes that I love. Mm -hmm. And, and that sort of just really opened it up. I think I was taking myself too seriously. I was, you know, I was dealing with a lot, but like, 
after that point, like I remember getting in the email from my editor and she was like, yes, this is it. We are, this is, this is what we've been waiting for. And that was such a relief to sort wow. of, to hear that because it was just like, it was you so hard to get to it. this point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting that like funny was so easy for you to get off, like get onto the page. And this one was more of a struggle, but like from when you first had this like negative an idea till you were like done with the story and you were ready for it to just be like, you were finished. How long was that entire process? Like that didn't overlap with funny at all? Not really. I mean, I think I had the concept for this book that, and it came out before funny came out. Okay. And I think I probably had one, one or two drafts before, but like, it just like really was not That's what wild. the book is right now. Yeah. And I, and then I wanted to have something out before funny. Cause I was like, I know when it comes out, there's going to be you know, you, you just get expectations and, sure. and all of that stuff. And, and that, you know, didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So I had to, I had to do like another draft where it was like, just dealing with all of the, like reviews and, right. and people and just being like, okay, how do I get this out of my head? Because it's really messing with my process. Right. Um, but I think, yeah, I think August was when I really got a hold of the story Nuts. and then it was just like we were rushing 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 go 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 um, yeah like that's a crazy turnaround yeah yeah and it's very impressive you know, <laughs> <laughs> again amazing team who were just like yeah like the cover was done before the book was done crazy and it's the most yeah. stunning cover and they look gorgeous gorgeous it's, behind gorgeous together i mean cassie turpin who did the art and cassie yeah. gonzalez who does art direction like i mean i could not be luckier they it's crazy have, and they're and Cassie's doing the the the, the Cassies are doing Cassie. um, for book three. So I need to talk to you about that after. So, <laughs> no, don't rush me. I have so many things to talk okay. to you about before we get there. But yeah, okay. their art is amazing. Like it's just Beyond. gorgeous. And I love like fish on the cover of this one also. Like I love that they I have know. like the exact same theme. And I was dying that the cat's name is like a felt to fish fish. That's just like <laughs> killed me. But before we go any further, you have to. You have to. I have to. It's too good. But before we go any further, I need you to like give everyone listening a little synopsis about what this book's about because then I have a million things to ask and talk to you about about the plot. <laughs> okay. Um so once more with feeling is a friends to lovers to enemies to lovers. Uh like dual triple timeline um, about Katie Rose, also known as Kathleen Rosenberg, who is a, you know, big time pop star um, dating a, a member of one of the biggest boy bands, Crush Zone. And then her career kind of has this big scandal where she has a, an affair with another member of the boy band named Cal Kirby. And then fast forward, you know, Many, many years later, uh, Kathleen is living her normal, you know, anonymous life and the opportunity to star in a Broadway show written by her best friend um, comes her way, which has always been her dream. Only problem is that Cal is directing it and they have not spoken since the scandal that like basically ruined both of their careers. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what (laughs) happened. It's the craziest book concept because it touches upon so many different, like, as you mentioned, tropes and so many different, like, wildly niche things like theater camp <laughs> and then, like, Broadway and then, like, that the the show and tell TV show with, like, the, I was just picking, picturing, like, Mickey Mouse Club. Is that, that, is that, yeah, yeah, yeah like, sure. it's sure. so many, like, epically, like, cultural moment things that are super super niche but like not ever talked about in this form of like pop culture anymore like in in a book form at least that you just tied together so well like how did the concept of the story come to you and like pulling all of those things together I mean I think it just I it was it was definitely a struggle and so like so much of it is like a blackout of like (laughs) you know just trying to figure out what to do and how to make like I mean you know, so much change. Originally, it was, you know, they were doing a revival of Into the Woods, you know, because yeah. it's my favorite musical. Wait, and have then, you seen the revival? No, I'm seeing it. It's coming to LA. I'm seeing it. I have tickets already. I'm very excited. Okay, it's so good. I went on Broadway. I didn't go when oh. it was like the original. My fiance went to like the concert one with like Neil Patrick Harris and Sarah Bellas. I went oh my God. to the the one that was like at, like on Broadway um, with Stephanie J. Block and her husband. It was. 
I was in the front row. I was shaking in my boots. I was freaking out. And that also in the book, me and my fiance were crying of laughter. In the cheating, like when they talk about the cheating and you're like, that's why Sondheim killed off the baker's wife because she yes. slept with. I was like, this is so fucking niche. I can't believe it. Like I felt, I was just like tripping out. I'm like, I can't believe I'm reading a romance book and this is being referenced. Like what world am I living in? Like it's too good. All of it's I mean, it's, it's so funny because I was so, you know, like I come from a theater background yeah. and I, you know, lived in New York for a while and worked in production and things like that. And when it comes to writing about like small communities, um, I am, I'm a, a, like, it's so important for me to get it right mm-hmm. that I honestly kind of forgot that there are people who don't <laughs> go to theater or don't know that much about theater. So yeah. it's like a balancing I, act. But I did not do the balancing act at all. Like I didn't even I didn't even think about the non-theater people. So when people are like, oh, I don't even like theater, but I like the book, I'm like, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't thinking about you, but I'm but great. But great. This is awesome. No, like, it's I, I was the 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 nightmare was like I would have some theater person being like, this is not how it works. And I'd be like, I'm so sorry. No, you nailed like, it. That was what you I was literally. thinking about. No, you literally I, I sent you the screenshot of my fiance. He was like, Oh, great theater for that. I I know. Run. You're I, dying. I, mean, I love it. I love it. Okay. I, and I have so many friends who are, you know, it was great to sort of be able to talk to them and just yeah. be like, you know, is I'm this right? right? Is this not right? Mm-hmm. Like, how would you do this? How would this happen? So yeah. Yeah. No, it's so good. But all of those concepts are so wild, like the theater camp and then like the pop star TV show, like all of these things, tie them all together. Like that's a crazy idea to come up with and then plop in like, oh, it's going to be a love story between two people. Like you're, right. you're pulling into so many different like worlds and different things. But once again, you include your Jewish protagonist mm-hmm. and it's so important. And I love the way you do it. And you did it obviously with Honey in your first book and now you're doing it with Kathleen in this book, like her name once again. And it's so interesting in that first book, you like really baked in the fact that she was Jewish into her name. And like, no matter what, you could strip that from her. Where in this book, it's like, you see that the Kathleen Rosemark had to turn into Katie Rose in order to make it like in the secular popular world. Like, why did you kind of choose to do that in this story and then kind of not in the other story? Um, I think it just, it worked like for for funny, it was definitely like, you know, in Dream of Dreams, if this ever gets made into anything, I was like, it has to be very clear from the, like, it has to be a plot point that she's Jewish, you know, it has to be mm-hmm. something they cannot change. Because, you know, we've all heard the, remember the horror story about like, you know, some executive wanted to do a movie with, uh, about Harriet Tubman with uh, Julia yeah. Roberts, you know, mm-hmm. so, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, they'll, 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 they'll find a way to do it anyways. But I was like, I'm going to try to put it in as much as possible. Mm-hmm. So it cannot be r- erased. And then, and then I, yeah, wanted to explore what it's like to be, because so many Jewish celebrities change their name, Mm -hmm. you know, like so many. And, and that's happening less and less. I think people are leaning into, you know, having non sort of Americanized names now and, and having, feeling much more comfortable and confident to sort of be like, no, first of all, you're, you're mispronouncing my name. Yeah. And it's not that hard to to pronounce it correctly. It's not asking too much. Yeah. Um, and this is who I am and my heritage and I'm not going to change it to make it easier for other people or to make it more palatable. Right. And, and so I wanted to sort of talk about that, but I also wanted, you know, I, Kathleen is such a fun character because I really wanted to do a celebrity romance where she kind of lo- like she doesn't love being a celebrity, but she loves performing. Mm-hmm. She loves being on stage. And so that makes her someone who she's going to do almost anything to to get that and mm-hmm. sort of not necessarily understand what the cost is until later. Right. Um, and that that was really fun to be able to do someone who who likes to be on stage, who likes attention. You know, I think mm-hmm. we we don't really like to talk about female characters that want things, that want things yeah. aggressively, that want attention. You know, it's like that's that's usually like what we consider the the negative right female characters um well, that's not our heroine our heroine is someone who's been thrust into the spotlight unwillingly and just <laughs> happens to be really good at it and it's like look yeah. i've been around enough actors i've been around enough theater people it's like you have to want this yeah for sure and there's no shame in that you know it's like it's ambition and we have a problem with women and ambition and i just wanted to mess around with that and play with that and this was a really fun way to do it. And obviously everyone's talking, you know, we have, we're having this moment in our culture where we're re-examining 
you know, what, how our culture has treated women, especially young women, especially young women in pop communities and, and, um, who were sort of sexualized at a really early age. Yeah. And so it felt like this was a, you know, this was a great time to be having that conversation and it was, um, fun to be able to explore that world, um, Mm -hmm. and, and have a character who sort of lived it and, and also enjoyed it, you know, like I, you know, like I, one of the big inspirations for it is there's this great YouTube video of Britney Spears doing the, um, I can't get no satisfaction VMA Mm -hmm. performance. And it's the actual performance. And then it's the rehearsal. And I would watch that over and over again, just to be like, she is so good and so talented and so focused. And we just don't see, like, we don't see that. Like mm-hmm. no one is talking about how fucking hard it is mm-hmm. to perform that way. And, you know, there's, there's a shot that they, d- they don't do in rehearsal and they do it in the live where it's a close up of her ass shaking. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, mm-hmm. you know, that like, she is, I can't, none of us can do those dance moves. <laughs> And they, and like the way that like our society sort of boiled it down into being like, she's just shaking her butt. Yeah. It's like, it is so much more. It takes so like the work and the, like the rehearsal and just years of practice. It took her to be able to get to that point For sure, is amazing. And I don't think, you know, and I really wanted to sort of explore that and be like, and also to be like, you know, maybe she enjoyed that it was, she was looking sexy and looking hot, you know? Yeah. yeah. And is there something wrong with that? You know, like she's not an idiot. She knows what people are looking at and she knows what part of her job is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, I wanted to have some space to sort of be like, this is fun, but also complicated. A hundred percent. And I think it's like such a credit to your writing and the way you tell stories that like, all of these messaging like totally come across and get through and totally like as a reader make you think and oh, like, oh, like, uh-huh, like you, you get it, but it's not in a way that it comes off in like a pushy preachy sense. Like it's still written in a way that it's like, you're reading a rom-com, like you're reading a <laughs> romance book, you're reading something that's light and cute and really, really fun and in total escape, like a, a total escape. But at the same time, you're very much aware of what's actually happening like underneath right and like even the part i mean back just the jewish theme of it all but like the part where she's like forced to record like a christmas album being a jew and like that whole scene that's not even a big scene and it's not it's not like it's a pivotal plot line to the story but it's like another oh moment that i feel like people don't really think about and it's not really found in romance books yeah I mean, we're still like, we are getting to a better point where there is more representation as far as, you know, marginalized religious communities, Mm -hmm. but you know, December rolls around Mm -hmm. and it's, you know, holiday romance, holiday romance means Christmas romance, you know, and everyone is doing a Christmas romance and, you know, it's, it's still really easy to feel like you're not, especially at that time of year to be like, where's my representation? Where is my, you know, where are my stories? Um, so, you know, we have, we still have a, a lot of work Ways that we need to do. Yeah. For sure. But the tropes in this book, like you could just tell the tropes that you love and the tropes that you use, because obviously there's so many that are shared between funny and, and one's more feeling. But what I loved is the last time we spoke, you said that like your favorite trope ever is enemies to lovers. And like, you were shocked that funny had no enemies to lovers storyline. And like, now here we are with an enemies to lovers storyline. That's like not the most important storyline. Like, I feel like when you read this book, like it, the second chance of it, like smacks you in the face. Right. And like yeah. the celebrity romance of it all, like so obvious, but the enemies to lovers is totally there. And it's a fundamental like baseline of this relationship. How fun was it for you to finally get to like execute that and do it and do oh. it so well? Oh, well, thank you. I mean, it was, it, it's a delight. I mean, I think the the trouble with enemies to lovers that I'm sure other romance writers can speak to is like, it's really hard to, to, you need them to be enemies, but not assholes to each other. Yeah. Like there has to be a really good reason that they don't like each other. And a lot of times I, I'll, I'll be like, well, I think the problem is that this guy is just a dick, <laughs> you know, like yeah. that, but that's not an enemies to lovers thing. That's like, this guy is a jerk. Yeah, he doesn't know how to like deal with his feelings, so he's being mean. Yeah. Um, and for me, that that sort of takes me out of the story. So I think I think enemies lovers is a lot harder than people maybe think. You know, think it is. Um, mm-hmm. and 
And so I was like, okay, yeah, what what is a real reason two adult people would would dislike each other? Yeah. You know, like it has to be something that is significant and For sure. and and this was a really fun opportunity to sort of play around with it. And, and I definitely upped it in later drafts for sure. I think there was a part of me like in early drafts that I was like, I don't need any conflict. You know, I just like, <laughs> I was like sucking the conflict out of the story as I was going, which was Fair. really not great. Um, mm-hmm. And, and also like, I love writing an angry heroine. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that is my, if, if I, if I will be, if I could be known for anything, it's hopefully writing like, extremely <laughs> angry. <laughs> female characters who are just so mad at men yeah it's so it's it's so good and another part of it the story obviously like the part of the conflict is there was like a cheating scandal when they were when they were younger and I know a lot of people like have issue with reading about cheating and are like if there's cheating like we don't even want it we don't want to read it we don't want to know it which like valid I understand but like the way you executed that part of the storyline for this specific book I feel is like it's that that isn't the point you know like the cheating part of it is not the point of it were you worried about having that included in the storyline and what the reception may be just because people are so like up in arms about those types of plot lines yeah, I mean, I definitely thought that I, I think there are certain people who are just gonna be like, I'm not gonna pick it up. Like I'm 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 not even going near it. And that is that is your prerogative. That's totally it. Mm-hmm. Um I wanted to sort of push back against this idea of like cheating is like just a black and white of of anything. Mm-hmm. Um and just to be like, look, these are people and people make mistakes and and I don't need I don't need um Kathleen and Cal to be angels. Right. You know, I don't need them to have done everything right to deserve happiness. You mm-hmm. know, I think we are all, we all screw up. We all make mistakes. Um, and, and I think that we all still deserve to be loved and to be accepted and, and all that stuff. But I think, you know, it's like, the thing is, is that someone is going, there are people who are going to read any of my books and just be like, this is like, I, you know, I, I have people who, who are like, you know, they don't like the swearing in it and that's, yeah. you know, then don't sorry, I, mm-hmm. I'm always going to be swearing in my books. That's just, that's just <laughs> what it's going to be. Yeah. So it's, so my stuff is just not for you and that's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm. Um, not all books are for everybody. Like 100%. I, I think I just ha- like, it's like, you have to remind yourself that and I have to do it too. Like sometimes, you know, you, you get your feelings hurt and you're like, well, you know, I wish they would read it or I wish they give it a second. Mm-hmm. But it's like, they don't have to. Yeah. No one has to read this book. No one has sure. to enjoy it. It's the people who like it. That's who it's for. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's the best way to look at it. But like looking back at the whole experience writing this book, is there one scene or moment that was like, oh, this makes it all worth it? Like, especially considering how hard it was to try to get to this point. Like, was there one moment, like an aha moment or a moment where everything really clicked or... Yeah, I mean the the moment I'm most proud of is the last chapter. So I can't say too much about it because okay, it's yeah. the you know mm-hmm. the the conclusion. But it was basically it was there was a point in which my editor was like the story was divided equally between the three timelines. So you have them at summer camp um, when they're like twelve or thirteen, and then or he's sixteen, and then um, them as <clears throat> pop stars in their early twenties, and then them as adults in their late thirties. And now it's like, there's, I think there's only like four, four or five chapters of them at summer camp. Yeah. And my editor was kind of like, do we need the summer camp stuff? I'm not sure. And I felt really, really strongly about the way I wanted to end the book. Right. It's the best. It's, I'm really proud of it. I think it works really well. And so good. Thank you. And And like, and like surprising. (laughs) <laughs> and like such a laugh like it's it's such a great ending and I can't wait for everyone to read it and just be like I literally closed the book and I messaged you right away but I closed the book with just like this shit eating grin on my face and I was like there's not one part of this book that I wasn't completely like immersed and entertained by you know like I was just again like I, I wasn't even aware that I was reading a book which is a thing that Aww. I feel like I keep saying to you when I read your books but like I just feel like, I don't know, I'm in another world, like legit in another world. So it was so good. And the ending was the perfect ending. Thank you. I mean, it makes me so happy because I I am, when I'm working on it, when I'm in it, like it does feel like I'm in, you know, these, I feel very connected to these characters. I think a lot about like, what are they doing now? And like, what, (laughs) 
what are they up to? And, yeah. um, and so it, you know, like, but I was really adamant. I, so basically like knowing that I really wanted to keep that last chapter, I had to find a way to make everything else work to lead up to that. But that mm-hmm. was, that was sort of like, once I got to the point of the book where I was like, okay, I have, I have most of what I need. I was right. like, okay, this is the heart of it. This, this moment needs to really be the closing thing mm-hmm. for this. And mm-hmm how do I, how do I earn it? Like, how do I get to that point? So it was a really helpful, like North star to have um, yeah. towards the end of the process. And can I just ask you about the title of the book? Like, how did it, how did this title come to you? Obviously like with feeling is like a huge through line of the book, but like, how did the title and how did you settle on it? So I, my titles are like my, my agent comes up with them. She oh like, God. I am not great at titles. Um, okay. And so I, I, and like, I think she came up, she came up with once more with feeling. And then I was worried that people were going to be like, it's like the Buffy episode. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the same, the similarities is that they're both musicals, but yeah. I was like, that's sort of it, you know? And I've had mm-hmm. a few people who were like, is this about Buffy? I'm like, no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, but it really like, you know, my, my agent and editor just, they're, they're so good with titles and they just, mm-hmm. they have a better idea of like how we want to approach the audience. Right. Um, which is a really nice thing to have. Cause I, that way I just get to focus on the story and they're like, mm-hmm. they're focusing on like how we're going to market this to people and sell right. it to people. And part of that is the title. And so sure. they, they came, you know, again, the title, the cover, all of that was done before the book was done. So I, in a certain sense, sense I was like, I have to live up to this, you yeah. know, like I, I really have to live up to this gorgeous cover. I have to live up to this great title. Um, and so that was, you know, more pressure, but good, the good kind of pressure for sure. Crazy. So now that when this podcast is out, the book will be out. What are you like hoping audiences take from this story in particular? I mean, I hope, I hope it gets people to check out theater. I hope, Amen. I hope we get some, some new musical theater fans. Amen. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you know, I think it's just, I want I, you know, I want people to finish these books and have reactions like you, where they just, they feel happy and they feel like they've, they've been engrossed in a world that they really enjoyed and had fun with, but also like challenged them a little bit. Um, you know, I, I want, I want my books to be enjoyable reading experiences. I don't want them to be something that like you have, you feel like you have to get through. Mm -hmm. Um, and so whenever, you know, I hear that people like you know, read it in a plane ride or, you know, overnight. That is, I'm a, I'm a very fast reader too. So it's a huge yeah. compliment just to be like, I'm so happy that this sucked you in. Yeah. Um, and that's just, and, yeah. And, and got you. So I, that's, you know, and just, just anyone, you know, people who will message me and who will notice little references to mm-hmm. theater things. Um, that makes me really happy. Um, people <laughs> who are, you know, like, oh, I feel seen in this moment, or I agree with yeah. this, or, you know, I'm just like, yes, this is, you know. That's why you wrote I, it. That's why I wrote it. And yeah. it's, it makes me really happy. Because I'm like, I could talk about why Grease 2 is an amazing movie. That also, that part killed me. I have this debate all the time with one of my best friends. She's totally yeah. Grease 2. I'm Grease 1. We have this fight literally all the time. All the time. So and it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate discussion 100%. that should be had. 100%. Yeah. I love that your yeah. team, Grease 2, she'll appreciate that. She'll like, see? <laughs> yeah, it's a great but movie. It is. It honestly, it is a great movie. I just, I don't understand how you can like beat stalking channing i just don't understand but anyway that's a <laughs> i mean stalker channing she is she's the hard one to beat for sure she is yes. the star of grease one 100 absolutely 100 um, i mean michelle pfeiffer she's so good i was like three years old like talking about like a hickey from kanicki like that's like really like it's just in my dna like i just oh I, for sure i mean my bat mitzvah theme was grease so no yes yes no stop did I you mean, friend <laughs> dress up as like pink ladies like what was how was it executed? uh I don't think anyone really dressed. I was, you know, oh, my okay. parents, my parents love my lovely parents. They got like vintage clothes and, you know, that. all, all the adults sort of dressed up and it was, it was super fun. I'm done. So. Like a good hand jive post horror kind of moment. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. I love that so much. That's so fun. <laughs> okay. But now that this book is out, like, what are you working on next? Are you able to share anything? Like, I just need to know. Yes. So I am working on, um, my third book for mm-hmm. Dell. I'm so happy to be working with the same team. So quick. And it's a follow-up to funny. It's, what? It's, 
it it is about Gabe's no. sister, Lauren. No. Yes. Yes. So it's my first no. non-Jewish protagonist, which is kind of a bummer, but there is, you know, but we're going to like, it overlaps timeline, like timeline okay. wise with funny. So it starts before funny starts and then okay. it continues after. So we'll get to see Gabe and Hani. We just get to see them from a different perspective. Oh my God. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm really, it's a, it's, it's going to be a bit of a tearjerker, I think, but I'm really, I'm really excited about it. Lauren is Lauren is a, she's a fun character. She's really fun. I'm freaking out. So how far into the writing process are you? Like what's the Not time? Not very is? far. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I, I've been thinking like, since I wrote funny, I always wanted to do a story. Like that was almost the second book. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But then because we didn't know how funny it was going to be received, we we're like, maybe we should do a different, you know, okay. story world. Yeah. Different story. And so being able to go back to this is really super fun. But you just like so. literally rocked my world with that piece of information. <laughs> I did not know. Like I was fully not expecting like a sequel story world situation at all. Yeah. I'm shocked. Wow. Okay. That is really exciting news. So you're early on. So you probably can't tell me much more in terms of like trope stuff. Is it celebrity at all or it's, no? It is. Yes, it is celebrity because, okay. well, if, if you remember in, in funny, um, Lauren is sort of being courted by a co-star of Gabe's from the Philadelphia story. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, here so we it's, go. it's that that's, if you go read that scene, that's the off ramp that I'm using. To sort of start this that's epic. The new book. That is so, so epic. I can't yeah. wait. Okay. Well, that makes me very happy to know we have more <laughs> books coming down the pipeline. That is epic. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, this was so much fun. I'm obsessed with you. I love your books. I will read anything you write ever, Thank ever, so ever. Much. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat about this book with me and for literally writing a book that was made for me. Well, I I I did it for you. No, yeah. I, I actually feel like you did. I really do. I was reading it and I was like, this is mine. This is my brain. This are my, <laughs> these are my. Well, now you find, you know, the other people who like it, you're like instant best friends. I, I know. I'm so excited now for everyone to read it and everyone who's like theater obsessed, like me, but on the low key to be like, oh, I love these references. And I'm going to be like you, my friend now. Yeah. Yeah. Love that's it. like, you know, that's what I'm so excited to see, to meet all of my, all my theater fans out there. Amazing. Okay. Well, thank you so, so, so much again. This was thank such you. a treat. <laughs>